Jennifer Lawrence is just so gosh darn down to earth, isn't she? Just like one of us. And just like one of us, she makes some dumbass mistakes from time to time. Let's talk about one. Recently, she was in one of those cringy Vanity Fair actor on actor interviews that's 45 minutes long, feels like 10 hours. Viola Davis is grilling her about some of her past work, uh, Hollywood in general, society, blah, blah, blah. And Jennifer Lawrence has the gall, the lack of historical fact on her side when she says the Hunger Games pioneered strong female leads in an action series. Before that, it just wasn't done. It wasn't conceived to be a thing because men want to watch men fight. They can't relate, nor do they want to watch some hot chick run around killing bad guys. Tell that to like 90% of dudes that play as females in Fortnite. We'd rather look at a woman from behind than another guy. That's just nature. That's just science. Naturally, social media was not kind to J-Law, and I think that's a little unfair. It's one thing to point out that she clearly screwed up and listing off some of the awesome female films of the past. It's another to drag another celebrity because let's be honest, they're no different than us. They just have more money, success, and typically better looks. And I quite fancy J-Law. She seems like a person who's trying to better herself and change over time and grow from her mistakes, not be a total pile of crap. Does she say things that are dumb? Sure, we all do. Does she trip on occasion when grabbing an award for best actress in a movie? Of course, that's J-Law, that's why we like her. I'm not gonna make fun of her, I'm no better than she is, and actually she's given me some amazing experiences over the years with the Hunger Games, with like one or two of those X-Men movies, Silver Linings Playbook, The Fappening, the list goes on and on. Instead, let's take the time to celebrate strong female leads. Because quite frankly, it's about time. And we're gonna do that today by reminding Jennifer Lawrence of some of the classics she may have forgotten or didn't know they existed as they slipped under the radar. Let's start with some of our basic go-tos. We have, of course, the Alien franchise with Sigourney Weaver, the definitive femme fatale badass who takes on the Xenomorphs and lives to fight way too many times over. Michael Myers may be the mask of the Halloween franchise, but Jamie Lee Curtis is the face, baby. When you think of Halloween, you instantly go to Michael Myers, followed closely behind with Laurie Strode kicking his ass, or at least hiding in a closet screaming long enough until he goes away. But lest we forget Nev Campbell and Courtney Cox in the Scream franchise, what about Angelina Jolie and Mila Jovovich in literally everything they're in? They're always badass female leads. Angelina Jolie was Lara Croft the Tomb Raider. She was Salt. She was Mrs. Smith in Mr. and Mrs. Smith. She was in Wanted, Curving Bullets. I know she's not the fully fledged lead in all of those, but damn it, she's the co-star. And these movies could have coasted just on her star alone. Mila Jovovich stole every scene she was in in The Fifth Element, and that has freaking John McClane, AKA Bruce Willis in the thing. You know, and she also stars in like 65 Resident Evil movies. So there is that. Show of hands class. Who remembers Underworld with Kate Beckinsale in tight leather? I'm a simple man. I see that. I'm in theaters day fun. The sequel's not great, but that first one, pretty solid flick. A poor man's blade, sure. But still, a poor man's blade is still a poor man's blade. The other female badass people turn to is Linda Hamilton as, of course, Sarah Connor, as they should. She's great. While technically not the lead character in either of the movies, she definitely outshines everyone else except for Arnie. I mean, how, how, the guy's too big. You can't get the spotlight physically around him. My personal favorite to bring up, Tarantino's Kill Bill with Uma Thurman. Holy crap, an assassin never looked so good in that yellow onesie with a sword slashing bodies left and right in cool stylized action scenes. It's my favorite Quentin Tarantino film. And I mean, it, it's just a gem all around. The fact that the sequel kind of let me down in a big way is, is disheartening for sure. But I'll always have that first one. We'll always have that first one, Jennifer Lawrence. Here's a pick from me that you should absolutely watch if you haven't. It's a movie that flew under a lot of radars over the years. And that film is The Long Kiss Goodnight, a movie I just rewatched two nights ago with the family. It's a Christmas staple in this house. You have Gina Davis, you have Sam motherfucking Jackson in here. 
kicking ass and taking names. She plays Charlie, a woman who has fallen to the classic trope of amnesia. And she's gonna spend the next two hours figuring out who she is all over again. And the way to do that, well, of course, by killing people left and right. If you're looking for something a little sexier, gentlemen, and a couple ladies out there, there's Charlie's Angels and the sequel, Charlie's Angels Full Throttle, although the first is better. The second one goes a little too Looney Tunes for my liking. Still a fun time. Plus, you have some of the greatest 90s, early 2000s actresses at their absolute prime. We're talking Cameron Diaz, Lucy Liu, Drew Barrymore, doing all sorts of high-flying acrobatic nonsense. Sequel features Demi Moore, who in 1997 was G.I. Jane, a powerhouse performance where this lady's not taking any gruff from no man. And she's gonna prove her worth. She's gonna prove her salt, Angelina Jolie. All right, that's enough. Starring Jennifer Lopez, a movie about a woman overcoming her abuser by kicking his ass. And if you're looking for something on the superhero side, well, we do have Supergirl, we do have Tank Girl, we do have Elektra, all three of those movies should be burned to the ground. That said, they were still at least trying to do it right, weren't they, Jennifer Lawrence? So while you did put your beautiful foot in your mouth and I'll pay money to see it, I do forgive you, ma'am. After all, we're all human and you have championed some great movies to add to the cause, such as The Hunger Games, such as Red Sparrow, such as a couple of those X-Men movies I mentioned. Keep it up. You're doing great. I mentioned a good amount of films, but I'm sure I missed a plethora that you yourself love. Put them in the comments below. Probably something featuring Sandra Bullock. She's a national treasure and she's been in some pretty cool films. Or perhaps you're thinking, let's Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon this bitch. Get some Michelle Yu in here. In either case, let me know below. Like the video if you had some fun. Please think about subscribing if you haven't as I post tons of movie related content each week on the channel. I'd love to have you stick around. I appreciate it. Take care. Oh my gosh, you're still here. That's incredible. Since I still have you, I, I should really point out, I have a second channel called Adam After Dark. It's a skit-based channel, it's brand new. Need the subscribers, need the likes, need the lulls. Uh, please head over there, be one of the first. Uh, we're trying to hit a thousand, we're trying to get there. This is the roadmap to that point, so get on the ground floor and you can say, you know what, I remember this guy when he was just a little, little 40 year old trying to make it on the internet. And now look at him. Now he's at 1,001 subscribers and things are really going great. I'd appreciate it. Thanks.